and uh, that's Betamax. I hope you liked that segment. Something else that's interesting about Betamax is that there was no copy protection at all. So if you ever tried to copy a VHS tape to another tape, like a commercial tape, like a movie or something, usually you'd probably end up with some weird coloring on your duplicate tape which was because of macrovision. Now the same thing happens if you take a DVD and you run it through your VCR and you try to record it, it won't record properly. With Betamax there wasn't any copy protection at all so you just copy from tape to tape to tape, just keep going. Perfect, well not perfect, but pretty perfect copies after every duplication. So without further ado we're going to go into our next segment which is vocoding with the stylophone. So what I have here is the stylophone. Now the stylophone is a pocket synthesizer. Uh, i show you turn it on here. Pop out this little wand. So you can use it as a synthesizer, make music. Over here you have your power switch. You have your vibrato. I'll show you a demo of that. So without vibrato, and with, and then up on the side here, there's a volume knob. There's uh, three different tone sets you can use here. So, show you the original, and then go to two. It's a more metallic kind of sound, and three is a higher pitch. So you have three total sounds. Uh, on the side here, you have an MP3 jack, and you have a headphone jack. On the back, you can see it takes three AA batteries, and there's also a pitch knob here. So if I play a note, and then use the knob on the back. You can do fun stuff like that. Um, this is a reproduction stylophone. Originally, they were from the 1960s, I believe, and they were marketed as a children's toy. Uh, there's two different models. There's the one you see in front of you, and there's a much larger one with the uh, larger pad here. And uh, it was actually used in some bands. For instance, uh, David Bowie used the stylophone in the beginning of his song Space Oddity. And uh, the man Kraftwerk used stylophones a lot. Um, as I said, this one's not an original 60s model, it's a reproduction. You can get these on uh, thinkgeek.com. This one ran about 11 bucks, I believe. And uh, today I'm going to show you how you can use this synthesizer to do some vocoding. So here I have Audacity, which is a great free sound editor. And um, if you don't know what a vocoder is, it's a combination between voice and encoder. It takes a human voice and it filters out the frequencies and then filters in another sound to change the sound of the voice. It's commonly used for sending like encoded transmissions. Now I've hooked up the stylophone through the line-in jack on my computer with the headphone jack of the stylophone and now I'm going to record some sounds. Okay, so that end one was a good one. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to cut it. And then I'm going to put it into its own thing. And I'm going to export it as a WAV file. I'm going to need to do this because uh, the program Xerus Vocoder requires WAV files. And save it as stylo.wave, just so I know what it is. And now I'm going to go into Xerus Vocoder. This is a great free program. I'll have a link to this up. And uh, the modulator file, I'm actually, I have it already specified. There's a modulator file that's included with the program. So just use that. It's a simple voice counting. And then uh, carrier file is my stylophone file. So I'll select that. And the output file, just something I named. Testing one, two, three. 
that's what all the files sound like. You, you, there's some options here. You might want to play around with those. I'm just going to leave them as default for now, and then I'm going to hit vocode. And that's it. The file's done encoding. So now I can go listen to it. Alright, and if I wanted to check out things, this is a great tool called Spectro. Now I'm going to open the file here. And uh, Spectro is a pretty great tool. Um, I believe I found it from the website what.cd. Basically, it's normally used to check to see if any of your music is from the correct source. For example, like if you have a FLAC file, you want it to be lossless. You don't want it to be like a transcoded, like a 128 kilobit per second file. Uh, so it's great to check out your own audio files just to make sure they're not duds. I'm going to open the modulator file that came with the program. This is the simple counting voice. And we're going to check that out. So this is what that file looks like see that right there and uh, next I'm going to open leave the stylophone file and you could definitely see how tweaking the knob on the back of the stylophone changes stuff up here and now opening up the final file the test file and this test file here is a combination of the two files. So you can kind of see how those two come together to create a pretty interesting file. And that's it for the Stylophone segment. Hope you enjoyed it. All the links should be available in the show notes. Hope you guys liked that segment. That one was a little bit tough for me to do because I haven't fooled around with screen capturing for quite a while. But I think I got that one down pretty good. Um, Go into the contest. We had some contest winners last episode. I believe the first was Gamer Goddess's brother or brother-in-law, but uh, he found out the telephone number that I was doing in DTMF the last episode and called up my voicemail, left the message, and then Gamer Goddess left a message. And then also uh, a user on IRC named Mation left the message, and I'll be playing these messages in the end credits.